Hello and welcome to Aspire Church Manchester. The message you're about to hear was recorded live at one of our recent services. If you stick around at the end, we'll give you more information about our ministry. But for now, enjoy the preaching. This keeps dropping out, I don't know why. It's challenging me this morning, amen. Let's get into the Word of God this morning, amen. Let's just pray. Can we pray? Father God, Lord, we just thank you for your presence here this morning, Lord. I just pray, Lord, that you would take me aside right now. Lord, we haven't come here to hear the words of man this morning. God, if that's all we hear, we'll go home disappointed. But we want, Lord God, for you to minister to us. We want you to speak to us. We want you to speak to that area in our hearts that needs encouragement and strength and reinforcement this morning. We want you to challenge us, Lord. We want you to inspire us and stir our faith, Lord. And so we give you room to move this morning. We invite you to take over the rest of this service and be glorified and have your way in every heart. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Praise God. This is a a two-title sermon. Uh, If you want a starting title, you could start off by thinking about radical. Now, I don't know what you think, but in in the day and age in which we live in, there seems to be an awful lot more people, groups and individuals and sections of society, that have got a lot to say and they're determined to make their point. Whatever their particular brand of injustice is, they want to rail against it, they want to change the system, they want to do things. Uh, You think about recently, if you're a United fan, unprecedented scenes at Old Trafford, where normally people would gather in the terraces there to shout United, they were standing in the car park going, we decide when you play. And there was protests and all sorts of things going on and policemen being beaten up and stuff like that. It It was insane. Extinction Rebellion. You've probably seen them in the town centre sitting down on tram tracks and blocking roads. Kill the bill. Yeah, there's that been going on recently. Uh, Black Lives Matter, more protests. And everywhere you look in society, there seems to be people who are sensing injustice and they're sensing that the only way they can change things is to get out and lift their voices and do stuff. Amen? You've seen it. You've experienced it. And we think of radicals as being noisy, forceful, demanding, confrontational, perhaps even violent. Pastor Tom, I really need that tape. Amen. We've got to get tape. This thing keeps doing a dying swan on me here. I'm going to get this attached. But that's the way we think of radicals. But when you look at the word radical, it actually means something quite different. The word radical comes from the Latin radix or radix, which means a root deeply rooted. Now this is different. If you like radishes, then that word radish, the name of that little, uh, is it a fruit or is it a vegetable? We don't know, but it's nice in salads, it's peppery. That means root and that's what it is. It's a little root, it grows in the ground and you eat it. Uh, Radiation, it means coming out from a root and spreading out. All these words that are based on this, this root word, see what I did there, amen. And the Bible has a lot to say on this subject of being rooted. Scripture quite often uses this picture of trees and plants and the root system that they have and what that does for the plant to teach us a lot of very profound truths. And that's what I want to look at this morning. Not so much radical, but rooted. How many rooted Christians do we have in here today? Amen. Hopefully by the end of this message, we'll have a few more. Amen. Now, I know about roots because I'm a gardener. One of the things I like to do at home is is garden and grow veg and fruit and stuff in my garden. But when I think about roots, I don't so much think about the plants I want to grow. What comes to my mind are the weeds. And anybody who has a garden here says, yes, I I struggle to grow the stuff I want to grow. But weeds, they grow on their own. They're just automatic. They just appear without any effort whatsoever. And some weeds are really easy to pull out. You can just walk up there, you can just yank it out, toss it on the path and it'll wither away in the sun and it'll be gone. Other root weeds, getting rid of them, that's a different matter because they're rooted. I've got some pictures of some rooted weeds on here. The first one, which hopefully will be coming up, is the dandelion. You all know the dandelion, those cheerful yellow flowers and the the dog leg leaves. Well, that's what's called a pernicious weed. 
It's difficult to get rid of. And the reason it's difficult to get rid of is if you ever dig one up, it has a root that goes down at least a foot, perhaps two feet into the ground. And it's got some staying power. The next one I've put up for you there is a dock. Now, those of you who know anything about nettles will also know about docks. If you ever nettle yourself, find a dock leaf, scrunch it up, rub it on there, and it takes away the pain. Wonderful things. But if you grow in your garden, they're difficult to get rid of because they also have a root that goes down at least two feet. So I've dug one up that went down three feet, two spades depths in the garden. And the third one there is the ultimate weed. That is horsetail. If you haven't seen that before and you don't have it in your garden, congratulations. Because if you ever do get it in your garden, it's going to outlive you. And the reason that, that weed is going to outlive you because its root system goes down not two feet, but three meters. That is deeper than I am tall. And not only does it go down three meters, it goes down a little bit, and then it spreads out. And then it goes down a little more, and it spreads out. And all of those spreading outs will grow along horizontally under the ground, pop up somewhere else, and spread the thing. Evolutionary people will tell you that that weed has been around since the di time of the dinosaurs. Now, there's a whole other story there. But if you think about it, that thing has been around so long, that thing is so successful, you can't kill it. You can't get rid of it because of the root system under the ground. So why is it that some weeds have these deep roots and what benefits does it bring? And what benefits would it bring to our lives if we were rooted in the things of God? Well, by looking at those weeds, we can draw some lessons. The first thing is, anything that is deeply rooted has stability. It's hard to pull up. It's strongly established in its place. It's not going to be easily moved by anything that you can do to it. Some people's lives are chaotic. They're blown everywhere by every wind of circumstance. They're like leaves before a storm. They say, I've known people. They seem to draw chaos around them like a cloak. You know, and you get drawn into their vortex and everything is unstable. But you look at other people's lives and they just have a stability about them that just defies the circumstances. And you think, how did they get there? Well, it's simple. These people know who they are, they know what's going on, they know what they need to do and where they need to be, and so that's where you'll always find them. We use words for these kinds of people like solid, dependable, reliable, trustworthy. You know, they're the kind of people that we like and we want to be around and we want to have involved in our lives. What's their secret? It's very simple. They're rooted. They're just rooted. 1 Corinthians 15, 58 tells us about rooted people. It says, therefore, my beloved brethren, be steadfast, be unmovable, always abounding in the work of the Lord because you know that your labor is not in vain in the Lord. This describes rooted people. They're steadfast. That word steadfast means fixed in position, not going to be easily moved. No matter what comes against their lives, they have a foundation underneath themselves, a root system, and you know things can come against them. It's like that house that Jesus described that was built upon the rock. The wind and the floods and the rain came, but it wasn't easily moved. Why? Because it was rooted into something. And people who live that kind of lives, if they're rooted in the things of God, they're not going to be easily moved. Here's a free thought for you. Those who are unstable rarely accomplish much of lasting value. Huh. Isn't that a truth? You know why? Because life often throws you a wobbly. Circumstances change. Bodies get old. Sickness comes. Difficulties arise. Societies and people's mindsets change. And if you're going to do anything over the long term, anything solid, anything lasting for God, you're going to have to have this quality of rootedness in your life. So that when things come against you and things change around you, you're going to say, I'm not going to be moved by that. I'm not going to be convinced by them. I'm not going to be drawn away by that there. I know who I am. I know what I'm doing. I know where I'm going and I'm rooted and I'm staying right here. 
being rooted in the things of God. Second thing, those who are deeply rooted have resilience. This means that they can take massive damage and still come back again for another round. That weed horse tail, it's wonderful. You can go there, you can rip off all of the top growth, you can eliminate every single bit of green that's in evidence. You can dig down as far as you can possibly dig down and hoik out as many roots as you can get as well. You can even go and nuke it with industrial grade weed killer. And all of the top will be gone. All of the, the soil will be clear. And you'll go, ha, 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 man won, weed nil. But you'd be deceived. Because you turn your back, you come back a week or two later, it'll be back. Stronger than before. Why is that? Because of the deep root system. And the ultimate thing is if you were able to dig that up and you were able to get down two, two and a half meters into the earth, right at the very, very bottom of that root system, you'll find it has a little bulb as well. <laughs> so even if you manage to kill 90% of the plant, there's enough of a spark of life in that little bulb at the bottom to start the whole thing again and come back and give you another run for your money. Amen. It's the ultimate weed. Those who are resilient, those who are rooted in the things of God, they can take massive damage. The devil can do anything he likes to them. Circumstances can come against them. Catastrophe, disaster, heartbreak, all kinds of things can come against them. They can be persecuted for their faith. All sorts of stuff can take place and it doesn't matter because they'll stand strong and they'll be back for more. And only the rooted in God can do that. Psalm 1 verses 1 to 3 talks about this tree by the rivers of living water. It talks about the resilience that a rooted person in God has. It says, Blessed is the man who walks not in the counsel of the wicked, nor stands in the way of sinners, nor sits in the seat of scoffers, but his delight is in the law of the Lord, and on his law he meditates day and night. There's the rootedness. He is like a tree planted by the streams of water that yields its fruit in season. Doesn't matter what the weather's doing, that tree will yield its fruit in season no matter what. Why? Because of the root. Its leaf not wither. Doesn't matter what takes place around it, it's got a root there. Nothing's going to set it back. And everything that it does will prosper, the Bible says. Doesn't it sound good being rooted? I'm going to give you some more about this later, so don't worry. I think if you look at our lives and our circumstances over the last 18 months to two years, I was thinking about it when I wrote this message, and I think it's fair to say that Satan had a right proper go at our life. Yeah? Not only has Satan had a right proper go at our lives and at our families and at all that we normally have in society with the pandemic and everything, Satan's had a right proper go at this church. He really has. You know what? We're still here. <laughs> Why is that? Because we're not rooted in some name on a signboard or some charismatic leader. We're rooted into the person and the gospel and the work of Jesus Christ. And that's what we're here to do. And that's what we're going to continue to do. Amen. And I never thought I'd say this from the pulpit, but thank you, devil. Because you know what? By all the stunts that you've pulled over the last 18 months, you've shown me who I truly am. You've reminded me of that truth that can get lost in programs and names and, and different things and all the busyness of life. You've reminded me and brought me back to that place where I'm saying the one thing that matters in my life is that I'm rooted in Christ, that I'm doing the work of Christ, that I'm staying with Christ. Amen. So take it as a positive, amen. If you've been blown around, if you've been kicked about, if you feel like a rugby ball, you know, over the last 18 months, thank God, amen, that all of this stuff has brought us back to a realization of who we are and what we're supposed to be doing. And as rooted people, nothing is going to divert us from that, amen. Rooted, resilience, that's a benefit of rootedness. Third benefit of rootedness is nourishment. The person that is rooted has access to resources that go far deeper than the, the things that shallower lives can access. Amen. Oh, 
water. You need water on a hot day. And this is very important. A weed or a plant that's only rooted in the top couple of inches of the soil only has access to the nourishment and the goodness in those top two inches. But something whose roots go down deep, like a tree or one of these weeds I've mentioned, they can access anything that's available in the whole column of the earth that's available to them. So they have access to resources that other things and other, other living creatures cannot possess, cannot touch. And that's really important. If you want to live a supernatural life, if you want to see things happen for God, if you want to see God do things that are normally impossible in the natural realm, you're going to have to be rooted. Because natural resources only bring natural results. Amen? If you want more than natural results, if you want supernatural results, then you're going to have to put down roots so that you can access the supernatural things of God. Amen. That's more than just coming to church. It's more than just turning up, listening to the worship team, singing the songs, enjoying the experience. You know, people come to church out of emotion. They come to church for feelings. And praise God, if that gets you in church, then I'm good with that. Amen, because you came this morning, and that's wonderful. But to really get rooted, you're going to have to go beyond those things. A rooted person can say, you know what, I'm going to go to church even though I don't feel like going to church this morning because I need to hear from God. I need to worship God even if I don't feel full of joy. You know, they press in, they have understanding. Psalm 1-3 again, remember that. It said in all that he does, he prospers. That tree that's rooted prospers. And this is why people can look at certain people's lives and they can marvel and they can go, how do you have what you have? How come you, you, you're so blessed? How come you've, you've had such a consistently good life over such a long period of time? What's the, what's the secret of your success? And the secret of the success isn't three, three principles of spiritual living or some new book or anything like that. It's dead simple. These people are rooted in Christ. That's where it comes from. How do you explain the supernatural? You can't explain the supernatural. It's supernatural, folks. It goes beyond our understanding. But if you're rooted in Christ, if you're praying, if you're reading the Word, I remember a time when I used to, I set myself and I said, you know what? I'm sitting here at work. I'm in my cubicle. I have nothing to do at lunchtime. It's not worth going out because there's nothing around here to do. I'll tell you what I'm going to do. I'm going to get my butty box and I'm going to open it up and eat my sandwiches and I'm going to read my Bible. And I set myself a simple principle. I said, even if I don't really understand what I'm reading, even if I don't really get it, I'm just going to continue reading one page after another, and I'm going to see how far I get. And I read the whole Bible through in uh, about eight months. And things happened as a result of that. And that was just simply me feasting on the Word of God. The Word of God will do something supernatural inside of your heart, but you have to ingest it. Amen? You've got to crack open that book and read something. You've got to think about what you're reading. You know, fellowship, that's another really good way. Fellowship, coming to church, prayer, reading, involvement in Christian life. These things will root you in Christ. And you may not understand it. You may not see it. You may not understand quite how it happens. The same way as a plant. All you see is the green on the top. But all that effort goes into building those roots is hidden. It's secret. It's it's not immediately evident. People won't look at you and go, whoa, fantastic effort at rootedness. Well done, brother, because they won't see it happening in your life. But when you put down those roots into God, you will see the growth as a result. Amen. So be rooted. Nourishment, that's the other third important thing that rooted things have. So at this point, let me say, roots are really important. What you decide to put your roots down into is going to determine the fruit that comes in your life. It's going to determine your level of success. Because listen, we're all going to have a certain level of success in our Christian life. Everybody sat here, everybody I'm looking at, you know, when your life span is over, you're going to look back and say, man, did I have a really good time doing the things of God? Or do I have regrets that I missed out on all the stuff I could have done for God? You know, we're all going to be there at that point, measuring our level of success. And where you put your roots is going to determine what happens. The root determines the fruit every time. 
every single time. Jesus said, by their fruits you will know them. He said the good things come out of the good heart, didn't he? He he gave us all these illustrations. And he was telling us there, he said, you know what? What's going to come out of a person's life is going to be determined by what their roots are. So if if you don't understand anything else, I want to encourage you today to put your roots into the things of God. Put your roots into Jesus Christ. Put your roots into understanding the gospel. Knowing who God is. Knowing who Christ is. And knowing how he feels about you. Those simple things will change your life and revolutionize your eternity. They really will. Let's look quickly at three things that I think we should be rooted in. And the first one I want to be honest. The first one we should be rooted in is Jesus Christ, the gospel, our faith. Colossians chapter 2, verses 6 through 9. This is great. This is perfect for what we're talking about today. It says, therefore, as you received Jesus Christ the Lord, so walk in him, rooted and built up in him, and established in the faith, just as you were taught, Abounding in it with thanksgiving. That no one takes you captive through philosophy or empty deceit. According to human tradition. According to the elemental spirits of the world and not according to Christ. For in him the whole fullness of deity dwells bodily. Woo, what a scripture. This scripture tells us here that being rooted is an active thing. It's not going to happen by accident. You won't wake up one day and say, whoa, look at that. I became rooted in Christ while I slept. It's not going to happen that way. Those who become rooted want to be rooted. They take steps. They put in the work to make that happen in their life. Verse 6 that we read here, it says, so walk in him. In other words, put your faith into practice. Grow legs on it. Begin to live the Christian life, not just know about the Christian life. Begin to do the things that the Word and the Spirit are telling you about through your devotions. Begin to put into practice some of the things that you hear preached from this pulpit or any other pulpit that you may be following you know, the, the ministry from, wherever you're from today. If you're listening online, you're not part of our church, you're listening to somebody. What do you do with the things that you hear? Do you just listen to them? Do you just go home and have a nice dinner and come back next week for another dose? Or is every single service that you attend something that you put in your mind and go, God, if you give me something today that I can take away and put into practice and establish in my life, I'm going to do that. That's the person who's going to become rooted, the person who does that. So start putting that word into practice. Accept its challenges. Don't just talk about faith. Live faith. Don't just talk about serving Jesus, actually serve Jesus and begin to do it and you'll see things happen. Verse 7 then says, rooted, built up and established. That's a progression. First of all, rooted, then from those roots you'll be built up and then when you're built up because of those roots, you'll be established and nothing's going to shift you, amen. This requires consistent work and progress. In other words, you've got to keep at it. You've got to press in. You've got to continue. Maybe you started off well in the things of God, but you become tired. You become disillusioned. You become kind of, you've, you've lost the plot. You've lost focus and you're drifting about. Amen. I want to encourage you today to get back onto track because listen, every single moment, every single bit of effort you put into being rooted in Christ is going to pay dividends in your life. Amen. It really is going to bless you. Then verse 7 again, he says, just as you were taught. In other words, stick to the gospel. I've seen so many people start off well with the simple truth of the gospel, but then they get pulled away by stupid arguments and fallacies and weird doctrines and odd stuff. Listen to me. If you want some advice, just stick around those whose lives are right with God, and you won't go far wrong. Amen? Remember what Jesus said, by their fruits you will know them? Look at the fruits of people's lives. If they're stable, if they're rooted in Christ, if you can see the Spirit and the ministry coming out of their lives through the things that they say and the way that they deal with people, then that's a good person for you to stick around. Amen? You stick around that kind of people, you'll be sticking to the gospel. You you won't go too far wrong. Amen? 
So stay where you should be. Show stability in the fruit of sound doctrine in your life, and it'll help you to be rooted. And then, again, in verse 7, he gives us another key. Abounding in thanksgiving. Amen. You're not going to get very far if you're grumbling and complaining about every little thing in a Christian life. One of the keys to being rooted here is being a thankful person. Amen. Hebrews 12, 15 talks us about a different root. It talks about a root of bitterness springing up. That's the kind of root you don't want in your life. And the antidote to the root of bitterness is thanksgiving. Be grateful, be thankful. Even thank God for the trials and the difficulties and the rotten two years that we've had. Amen. Thank you, Lord, because good things come out of it. Amen. It does. And then verse 8 tells us, I won't go into all this in great depth, but verse 8 tells us that people put their roots into the wrong things. And it warns us about some stuff here that may look attractive, may look reasonable, but it's not going to help you to grow into the things of Christ if you root into them. Philosophy. Well, philosophy is great. It asks all the big questions of life and the universe and everything, but it doesn't give you any answers. That's not going to help you. Empty deceit basically lies. You're not going to get anywhere if you base your life on things that aren't true. That's why we need that's why we need the word of God. We need the truth, people. The truth will set us free. Amen. So don't waste your time being rooted into those other things. Human traditions. Well, we've been at this for as long as the human race has been around. And so far, we've done a pretty bang up job. I think we need to do it God's way. Amen. Human traditions are not going to help you. And then it talks about the elements or rudiments of this world. In other words, the basic humanistic, secular building blocks of thought. You're not going to figure it out through human intelligence. The world's been trying to do that. Every time there's a catastrophe in society, they come up with a human answer. It doesn't work. The world needs Jesus. Amen. The world needs the solution of God. You're trying to change people's hearts by doing all these policies and different things and making rules. The only person who can change the human heart is the grace of God. You change the heart, everything else in society falls into place. Tinker around at the edges without changing the heart, forget it. Amen. So there's some things not to be rooted into. Be rooted in Christ. Amen. Be rooted in Christ and you'll have success. The second thing we need to be rooted in is found in Ephesians 3, 17 through 19, where it tells us, that Christ may dwell in your hearts through faith, and it says that you, being rooted and grounded in love, amen, may be able to comprehend with all the saints what is the breadth and length and height and depth, and know the love of Christ that surpasses knowledge, that you may be filled with all the fullness of God. He talks there about being rooted and grounded in love, and that's critical. Many of us in here do an awful lot of Christian stuff. I do a lot of Christian stuff. Some of us are in Christian leadership. We have influence over other people's lives. But listen, the moment you lose this, the moment that love stops being the underlying basis for every single thing that you do, it's gone. Amen? The Bible tells us here that above everything else, you've got to be rooted and grounded in love. This is so key. This is so key. If you're going to witness to somebody, there's two ways to witness to somebody. You can stand there and, you know, raving from a bin or a bench and tell them that they're on their way to hell, which may be factually true, but that's probably not going to win them. If you tell them that God loves them and God will save them from whatever it is that they're bound by, I think they might listen a little more. Love, love for that person should be the underlying reason words that you speak. In your marriage, in your family, if we don't have this foundation of love, if we're not reacting in love towards our children, if we're reacting in anger and frustration, then we've lost the plot and this root is not in us and we're going to struggle. The fruit is not going to be right. Leadership, service, church stuff, man, no matter how elevated you become, no matter how big an organization you've got to administer, no matter how complex your job is or how challenging it is, the moment you forget that love is the essence and love is the root and love for people and love for God is the reason that you're there, then you've lost it. 
Be rooted and grounded in love. Whatever it is, do an inventory today of your own life wherever you're at and say, God, what is the motive for all I do? Why do I come to church? Why do I do the ministry I do? Why do I say the things that I say? Why do I act and treat people the way that I do? God, if it's not love, if it's not primarily love for you and secondly, love for my fellow man, then God, change me. Because the moment we lose this root of love, we've lost everything. And the third final thing I want to leave you with today, this is one of mine, I think. I think people, if they're going to really succeed, need to be rooted in their local church. Amen? I heard one or two amens from over that side. Amen? Don't know about everybody else in the other bits of the building, but listen, it's the truth. Many people in the UK go to church, but not an awful lot of people put down roots in the church. And remember what we said about roots If you put down roots, then you're going to prosper. You're going to grow. Amen? You're going to have stability. You're going to have an anchor. Things can happen in your life, and you're going to have resources that are going to help you to recover and come back. Those without that connection, those without that rootedness, those that don't put down their roots and anchor themselves into the place that God has brought them to, they're not going to have that. You're going to miss out on those resources. And just for your practical benefit, you you owe it to yourself to be rooted in a local church. We did a Bible study on the church recently in our uh, Sunday evening ones. And we saw that the church isn't a human organization. It was invented, it was founded, it was designed by God. It's a supernatural entity. Jesus himself founded it. Jesus himself created it and calls you and I to be part of it. Why is that? So that we can have those supernatural resources flowing in our lives. People that I've seen that are successful, they root themselves into their church in two key ways. First of all, they connect themselves with other believers. Amen? There's a lot of good people in here. I wonder how many of them you know. How many names you know? Maybe there's somebody here, you've seen them week after week, but you don't know their name. I know that we're in COVID. I know that we're supposed to talk two meters apart through a piece of smelly wet cloth and we're not meant to interact with one another. But even from two meters distance, you can say, hi, brother, I see you week after week, but I don't know your name. What's your name? My name's Alan. Oh, praise God. It's good to meet you, Bill. You know, thank you. And you've made a connection there. Next week, you can speak to that person and use his name and begin to build up a relationship. And that might be the best friend that you've never yet discovered. Amen. Bill might be the person who's going to encourage you when you're down. Bill might be a prayer warrior who's going to pray for your need. Amen. Root yourself. Connect with other believers. Don't be the roadrunner Christian. You know the roadrunner, that cartoon? Meep, meep. As soon as the service is finished, all the roadrunner Christians, meep, meep. Wow, I'm sure there was a person there, but all I feel is a breeze. Don't be the roadrunner. At least walk out of the building, amen? Stick around. Connect with other believers. Really, really, this is going to bless you so much if you do this. And secondly, involve yourself in ministry. If you do something for God, if you begin to put some practical legs on your faith and help out in some way, even though it might be a meager and mundane thing, You're going to be blessed by that. And it's going to develop those qualities in your life of consistency and and understanding. And slowly, in a way that doesn't make sense to you, you're going to find God blessing your life. And you're going to find yourself connected to other things. You're going to find God doing stuff in your life. How does it work? I don't really know. But I can tell you it does work because I've done it for years and I'm blessed. Amen. So there we go. Rooted, rooted, rooted. I wonder how many people here are rooted. Perhaps you've come into the church today and you've come in with many questions. You've come in with uncertainties in your heart. Maybe you're struggling with different aspects of your Christian life. Maybe you're struggling in your marriage. Maybe you're struggling with your identity or at work. Probably one of the reasons for those struggles and turmoils that you're you're wrestling with this morning is the fact that you don't really know who you are in the sight of God. You don't know where you're meant to be, and you don't know what you're meant to be doing. But listen, Jesus can fix that for you this morning. 
because his word is clear. He has a destiny. He has a calling for every single one of us. You're not on this planet by accident. You're here because there's a purpose designed in the plan of God specifically for you. You need to embrace that. You need to connect with that. Root yourself into what God wants to do. And all of those questions and uncertainties, most of them will disappear. Amen. Rooted Christians. Rooted. Rooted. Let's be rooted in Christ above all else. Let's keep our church rooted in Christ above all else. Let's keep our lives and our families and our minds and our thinking rooted in Christ and in the things of God. And if we do that in an uncertain world full of radicals, we'll be able to hold our course. Can you say amen? Let's bow our heads and let's pray this morning. Oh, Father God, we thank you. We thank you, Lord, that you've given us something solid in our lives. God, when we think of where we could be trying to find our way in our own, floundering about, Lord God, just searching for meaning and answers in this life, you revealed Christ to us through your word, Father God. Through the ministry of your spirit, you called us into communion with the one who created the universe. Thank you, Lord. Thank you for the privilege of knowing you. Thank you for the certainty and the solidity that brings in our lives, Lord God. But help us to be rooted today. Help us, Lord. So many times it's so easy for the storms of life to blow us off track and cause us to forget with all the noise who we are and what we should be doing. But today, Lord God, help us to come back to our roots. You are our root, Jesus Christ. The salvation we have in you is the root of every blessing that we possess. And help us to focus, refocus, reconnect this morning with that tremendous reality. If you're here today, maybe you're a visitor with us. We thank you for coming. Or perhaps you're watching online. And you don't have that connection with Christ. Your life is uncertain. But listen, there is certainty available. You crack open the pages of the Bible. Scripture will give you certainty. Jesus doesn't say, oh, if you do these things, you might be all right. The end of the gospel of the book of John says, these things were written so that you may know that you have eternal life. Jesus Christ in the gospel is a matter of certainty, not conjecture. You receive it by faith, but what you receive by faith is solid. And this morning, if you're uncertain, if you don't know the presence of God in your life, you don't know what it means to be forgiven, you don't understand that, but you know that you're craving for something real, Jesus can give you that this morning, just as he gave to me all the many years ago. When I prayed the simple prayer that I'm going to introduce you to right now, the words aren't special, there is no form of words, it's just the simple expression of a desire of a heart. And you can pray this prayer along with me this morning, if this is you. Just, just echo these words in your heart. Say, Lord Jesus, I know that I'm a sinner. I understand, Lord God, that you are the rock. You are truth. And I understand your love, that you gave your own life on the cross to die for my sins. Lord, I give you my life this morning. I accept you as my Lord and my Savior. I place my trust in you. From this day, God, help me to be rooted into truth. In Jesus' name I pray, amen. And if you prayed that prayer, amen, please don't leave this place without coming up at the end and shaking my hand or Pastor Tom's hand, because we'd love to help you. We'd love to give you some words of encouragement that you can take home with you that are going to help you as you start that new life. If you prayed that prayer online this morning, please email us, get in touch with us. We want to help you to know Christ better. Brothers and sisters, as we bring this to a close today, do you need to be more rooted? How's your love? Are you rooted in love or have you become kind of a professional Christian that's lost the reason for all that you do? That's not a bad thing. I could even say that's happened to me over the years. 
But thank God for God's grace that we can get right. Maybe you need more strength in your life. You need more stability. Maybe the storms of life have blown you off, off course and ripped all the green growth off the top of your life. But today, you say, I want to root myself in Christ. I want to come back. God, I know that deep, deep down at the end of those roots, God is that bulb of eternal life. God, today, reconnect me, re-energize me, let me grow again. Whatever God might have ministered to you today about, amen, through this message, we want to spend a few moments, we want to open up this altar for you to come forward and find a place to pray at the front here and allow the Holy Spirit to do a work of restoration and renewal in your life, amen. If there's anyone today, just feel free, don't stand on ceremony, don't worry about what anybody else is doing or whether they're doing it or whether they're not doing it. If you need to connect with God this morning, then you come on out of your seat and find a place to connect with the Lord. God's a God of individual. You come as an individual this morning. He will meet you as an individual. Let's spend some time in prayer this morning. Let's just believe God for our brothers and sisters. Let's believe God for one another. Let's just press into the things of the Lord this morning. Oh, Father God, we thank you this morning, oh God. Lord, above all else, we desire to be rooted into you. We don't want fame, Lord God. We don't want recognition. We don't want any of these things. We don't want the trappings of the world. We want the treasure that goes beyond all of that stuff, Lord God. The treasure of eternal life in Jesus Christ. That solid rock in the storm living within our heart, Lord God, that's going to see us through. We don't know what the future holds, but we know that you hold the future. Today, God, encourage your people. Renew them, Father God. Stir their faith, Lord God. Help them to know, Lord God, that even in failure, Lord God, if that applies to their life, Lord God, you are the God who brings new life from failure, God, and you can restore and renew the years that the locust has eaten. God, whatever it is this morning, encourage and bless, Father God, and stir us, we pray, to continue. Let us be rooted people. Let us be rooted in Christ this morning. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Lord. Thank you for joining us today at Aspire Church. If the message today has blessed you, or there's something we can help you with, we'd love to hear from you. Send us an email to info at aspirechurch.co.uk. We meet in different locations throughout the week, and if you'd like to join us in person, we'd love to have you visit us. You can find all the details on our website at www.aspirechurch.co.uk or if you'd like further information, find us on Facebook, look us up on Twitter. We also live stream all of our services and once again, if you'd like to view online, you can find all the details on our website. Thank you for joining us today, being part of our ministry. We'd love to help you in any way that we can. God bless you.